Jason, I've thought about this all week. I don't want to give you life without parole. To send somebody so young to jail is just a waste. But my hands are tied. And the judge, when he's reading my sentences off to me, life without parole, 2020, 2020, 40, 40, 40, 40. It was like a punch every time he said a number to me. As a young kid growing up poor, when I would watch TV, I would always see, you know, the people that played those characters that were drug dealers or drug users, gang members. They were people that looked like me. And they had the girls, the cars, the jewelry, and I wanted to be like them. Those were my heroes. The day that I got arrested, I was at my mother and father's house. This was in 1998. I mean, to think that you, know, you could get life without parole for selling drugs didn't register in my brain at that time. I was a kid. I mean, I'm, I had just barely turned 21. And I remember laying in my prison bed, and I'm thinking, this is not who I am. I just, I, you know, I wasn't a bad kid. I was just a kid who made uh, bad decisions. And, uh, you know, I shouldn't have to die in prison for them. Filed motion upon motion, brief upon brief, all the way to the Supreme Court. Everything came back denied. There was really nothing else that I could, I could file. So in 2013, December 19th, they're looking for me at the prison. I get cold chills, and automatically I think something happened to my son. So the next thing you know, the warden walks in, and he goes, I got an executive order from President of the United States commuting your sentence. And when I seen the paper with that gold seal on it and his name, I just put my head down and I start crying. Uh, and I keep saying, it's over. It's over. I'm what a second chance looks like. What a second chance can be. 